We're glad to know you're still there and watching the breakfast. Uh, we're now going to look at the first hot topic. President Tinubu sets out fiscal policies to tackle economic realities in his speech. That's what we're going to be looking at, the speech of President Buhari. And uh, to talk with us on that, we have a public affairs analyst, Nick Agule. Good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Uh, good morning and good morning to our viewers. I like the way you look, very patriotic this morning. Yes. Very good. Uh, since, True, I, Nigeria. since I can only see Victoria, I hope you're not changing the name of Nigeria to Victoria. It ends the real real, the same thing. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Not at all. Not at yeah. all. You listen, to yeah. This, you listen to the speech of Mr. President, and he spoke uh, about a lot of issues. Let me get your takeaways from that speech that he delivered before we take them specifically. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank Mr. President for speaking to us. <laughs> because given what we experienced in the last administration, where we always heard from the presidency, we're not hearing from our president, we're hearing from the presidency. It is a refreshing departure from that tradition that we had in the last administration that the president would address us directly by himself. So I want to say thank you, Mr. President, and please do more of these uh, speeches to us. Uh, one other thing was that I actually thought that speech was going to be on security because Mr. President, uh, together with leaders of ECOWAS, have committed our troops to battle. They've committed our troops to war. So it is a tradition as well that any time a president is about to send troops of the country into war, he addresses the nation so that he will tell the nation the reason why our military will be put in harm's way. Uh, so I actually thought that was what he was going to talk about, the fact that uh, we heard the outcome of this meeting, ECOWAS meeting, that... Uh, if the junta in um, Niger don't clear, in one, don't, don't step down and restore democracy in one week, that there will be military action. So, but uh, that didn't happen. Instead, the president spoke on the economy. But either way, please, let the president speak to us more often. Okay. Uh, well, so now, some of the things, that, the highlights that uh, that speech brought to us are very clear to us now. And... Uh, would like you to comment on each and every one of them if you have the if we have the time he is to spend 75 billion naira between july 2023 and march 2024 to strengthen the manufacturing sector increase its capacity to expand and create good paying jobs and is to also fund 75 enterprises with great potential to kickstart a sustainable economic growth accelerate uh, structural transformation and improve productivity each of the 75 manufacturing enterprises to access 1 billion naira or 9% uh, pa with uh, 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 let me wear my glasses with maximum of 60 months repayment for long term loans and 12 months for working capital he's also going to energize the micro small and medium-sized enterprises and the informal sector with 125 billion naira. He will spend 50 billion naira on conditional grants to 1 million nano-businesses between now and March 2024. He will give 50,000 naira each to 1,300 nano-business owners in each of the 774 local government areas. He will fund uh, 100,000 MSME and startups with 75 billion. Like you said, everything was about the economy, and there are so many other th things that I might just uh, continue mentioning to you. But let's just take what you feel about these specifics that we have mentioned, beginning from the first one of spending 75 billion between July 
2023 and March 2024. We are in August. I don't know if this expenditure has started in July because this, the time frame is from July to next year. Thank you very much for that question. My overall view of the package as announced by the president is that I don't believe in it. And the reason why I don't believe in it is that it's not because the president is being generous to offer packages to the business sector, especially small businesses. But I am worried about the implementation. You see, we have a civil service that is palpably corrupt. This is the same civil service that the organized private sector gave them palliatives during the COVID era to distribute to Nigerians, and the palliatives were looted. This is the same civil service that is looting the budget. And so every year we have budget, 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 but you can't see any economic development. And you ask yourself, where is the money going? I don't know if uh, our viewers can recall in the in the aftermath of covid there was uh, a group of uh, scientists in court that were put on television where the central bank of nigeria was giving them money to conduct research into covid vaccine has anybody heard about those covid vaccines since then not at all that money has gone so the whole idea of government giving money to businesses to do x y or z uh it's not effective because we have tried this several in the past there have been schemes like this and they haven't shown any success what government needs to do is to create the enabling environment for these businesses to thrive for instance we speak about power supply if people if give money like now they are talking about we'll give one billion each to 75 companies which which are those companies who is going to select those companies what is going to be the spread of those companies as nigerians how do we even know that these companies have collected 75 i mean 1 billion each what is the guarantee that these companies are not front by civil servants and public servants they are their own company that they have fronted and collected the money and spent it so government shouldn't go that direction government should create a neighboring environment 70 percent of the problems of businesses in nigeria is lack of electricity and we keep talking about this thing we used to have factories that have closed and gone elsewhere because we're not giving them enough public power supply mr president he needs to understand that as we speak today nigeria is generating and supplying 3,000 megawatts of electricity 3,000. 3,000 megawatts is what some industrial parks. I'm not talking about a city. I'm saying industrial parks elsewhere get as power. If Mr. President takes his eyes and looks at a place like Brazil, where they are generating and supplying 150,000 megawatts per day, you ask yourself, if one country is giving 150,000 megawatts to their businesses, and I'm giving them 3,000, do I expect my businesses to survive? They cannot survive. So regardless of the money he's giving them, they still can survive because they don't have the, the necessary energy to, so, to survive. And, and there are other things, for instance, the, 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 the borders are porous, uh, businesses try to produce and uh, stuff are coming in, enter, coming from uh, abroad and being dumped in Nigeria, enter any supermarket in Nigeria. It will surprise you the range of products that are not made in Nigeria. I was in a supermarket in Abuja here two days ago. I wanted to buy oats. And on the whole range of oats that I saw on that shelf, 90% of them carried Dubai, carried uh, uh, Malaysia, carried this thing as the place where they were made. Oats is made from Siri that we should be producing in bountiful here in Nigeria. Businesses are facing a lot of taxation. Too many taxes, multiple taxes by all the tires of government. Businesses are facing high interest costs. If the interest rate on borrowing is topping 30% or more, how do you expect businesses to survive? Mr. President identified that very clearly in his inaugural speech. And he said that, look, he's going to bring down the interest rate. But under his regime, the central bank just had a, a monetary policy committee meeting and increased the interest rate. 
So it appears, Mr. President, is not even following up on his promises to us. Until we bring interest rate to single digits, how do we expect businesses to survive? And when you are bringing interest rate to single digits, it shouldn't be on loans that you say you are giving to 75 companies. It should be for the entirety of businesses in Nigeria who should go and assess cheap credit so that they can expand their operations. We have issues with infrastructure. A business produces their goods in Lagos. To carry those goods to Kano, either the truck is going to fall off on the road or bandits are going to seize the truck. You know, so, so all of those are the kind of things Mr. President should deal with. Once he deals with those kind of things, the businesses will survive on their own. They will swim on their own. They will not even need this... Uh, handouts that Mr. President is, is offering. So my view is that Mr. President is failing to deal with the fundamental issues. He's going to deal with symptoms. There is something that is making the businesses not to try. Let him go and deal with it. Okay. Um, uh, can you just mention them? I know that you've talked about them. Okay, okay let me leave that. Uh, let's just say, does it worry you that Mr. President is still not very deliberate talking about what will be done to to stamp out corruption. Yes, he, the central bank governor has been arrested, and I don't know how that relates to fighting corruption. Um, a lot of things that he has done, some people will say that is fighting corruption, but he has not said anything deliberately, anything specifically as to how he's going to fight corruption. And you just mentioned the fact that there is that corruption which gives you no confidence at all that these policies or the things that he reeled out yesterday in his speech will be implemented at all. So how, how do you feel about the fact that there is no specific um, pronouncement regarding how to fight corruption? I feel very, very worried. I feel very, very worried because Mr. President should actually have a single point agenda. And that single point agenda should be the rule of law. Mr. President should ensure that the rule of law reigns supreme in Nigeria. Once the rule of law, uh, 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 rule of law reigns supreme in Nigeria, corruption will go. Every of the, uh, the problem, the ailments that worry us today, they will go. Because you see, humanity is meant to be run with the law. In those places where our people are jackpying to, immediately you arrive in those places. You will see clearly that here is a place of law. You can't just behave as you like. You must behave in accordance with the laws of the land. And if you don't behave with, in accordance with the laws of the land, you'll find yourself in jail. Mr. President, read the riot act to all the security agencies and says, look, my government is a government that respects no persons. I want to bring all Nigerians equally before the law I'm not just saying this, Mr. President begins to carry out the reforms that will make that happen. Because you're not just by saying that, he has to put his money where his heart is. The, the, the police we have today, given the funding, given the equipment, given uh, everything that they have, they are going to be incapable. They are going to be incapable of, of, of uh, enforcing law and order in Nigeria. Because they don't have what it takes. You remember that the Inspector General of Police, and these are the things I expect Mr. President to be paying attention to. The Inspector General of Police, uh, immediately he took office, he said no more roadblocks. No blocks are there. Because that, that becomes the funding mechanism for the police force. So these are the fundamental issues that Mr. President has to be dealing with. The reforms that will bring about the enforcement of law and order in Nigeria. And once he has that singular objective and he faces that objective, tackles that objective, he will see that he's going to have a different set of people. Because that is what we see. When, when we get on a flight here in Abuja, right there at Abuja Airport or at Lagos Airport, you see how unruly Nigerians are behaving. The same Nigerians get on the flight, when they arrive in London, they start to behave differently. And the reason why they start behaving differently is because in London, the leaders have made the rule of law to be supreme. And that is why you are getting the same Nigerian 
better quality in London, bad quality in Nigeria. Mr. President has to understand that. Okay. Oh, well, um, let's just take a final word from you um, to, to Nigerians, uh, to those in government, and uh, just something to, <laughs> to hold on to until things begin to happen. Here in Lagos, at least, the governor has said to, um, you know, help in this hard time, in this harsh condition that we are facing because of the fuel subsidy removal, he is slashing the transport uh, of uh, BRT buses or every, every bus that is run by the Lagos State Government, the price of commuting on those buses is going to be half right now. So at least we have some respite. The question I was asking uh, this morning was, what about the people who do not need to go on the buses? How does that uh, help them? Because fuel was something that everybody enjoyed. Now that it has been released or removed, they are now giving specific um, palliatives. So if you're a car owner or you, you're someone who goes to work, you have the opportunity to enter the bus. But the person who is at home, who, are still, who is still going to buy from the market, whose prices have gone up because of this thing, will still suffer and all that. I was just asking that question. But I do hope that it will, uh, it will be better. So a comforting word from you, please, as we wrap up the segment. I'm sure that, thank you very much. I, I wrote an open letter to Mr. President to appraise his speech. And in his speech, I scored him very high on issue identification because he was right on the money to identify what the issues are. But I scored him very low, in fact, 20% on solutions because Mr. President is not providing us the fundamental solutions that will deal with this matter. For instance, Mr. President was totally quiet about the refineries in his speech. I was surprised. Because this fuel subsidy that he has removed, the fuel subsidy came about because our refineries were dead. So you cannot now come and just remove fuel subsidy without restoring the refineries. I expect Mr. President to be telling us that he has set up a tax force to sell off the refineries or lease them out so that the refineries will start producing fuel. He didn't mention anything about that. Mr. President mentioned nothing about electricity, which is pinning down businesses. Mr. President is talking about going to import buses. When Mr. President should be talking about rail, because when you have a, 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 a rail line, you see, those 3,000 buses that Mr. President is talking about importing, he said each bus will carry 20 persons, and then there are 3,000 of them. That is 60,000 people nationwide. Do you Do you know that less than all of those 60,000 people. That is how Ray is so important. You know, so Mr. President should actually sit down and look at fundamentals. He's not dealing with the fundamentals. And until he deals with the fundamentals, his cosmetic solutions are not going to do very much. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Nika Gule, for being a part of our program today. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and Nigerians, well. <laughs> okay, uh, that was Nika Gule, a public affairs analyst, talking to us from Abuja this morning. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the power of the right communication. Stay with us.